And here is the Writer's Almanac for Tuesday. It's the 1st of March, 2022. It's the birthday of the poet Robert Lowell, Boston, 1917, whose work established a new confessional style in American poetry, poems such as For the Union Dead, to speak of woe that is in marriage. As a young man, he left home in Boston, dropped out of Harvard, moved to Tennessee, pitched a tent on the lawn of the poet Alan Tate, converted to Catholicism, married the novelist Gene Stafford. During World War II, he became a conscientious objector, spent five months in a federal prison in Danbury, Connecticut, went back to Harvard, studied with John Crow Ransom, wrote the poems that made up his first two collections, and won the Pulitzer Prize at the age of 30. And it was about that time he was hospitalized for mental illness for the first time, what would be the first of many, many times. He was bipolar. He had manic depressive disorder. He himself referred to his mania as pathological enthusiasm, described a manic episode as a magical orange grove in a nightmare. He was in and out of psychiatric hospitals throughout his adult life, frequented McLean's psychiatric ward in Boston, where Anne Sexton and Sylvia Plath, two of his students, also went. Stories about his psychiatric episodes were famous around Harvard, Robert Lowell wandering around Harvard Square without a coat in the middle of January, shivering and wild-eyed and incoherent. And after his episodes, when he had regained his sanity, Lowell was inevitably embarrassed and wrote long letters of apology to people. But his disease was also his material, especially in the poems for his collection Life Studies, which came out in 1960. He was married to three writers, Gene Stafford, Elizabeth Hardwick, and then Lady Caroline Blackwood, with whom he moved to England for the last decade of his life. He was separated from her and in a taxi from JFK into New York City to visit his second ex-wife when he had a heart attack and died at the age of 60. It's the birthday of the poet Richard Wilbur in New York City, 1921, served in the infantry in World War II, fought on the front lines, but when he wrote poems about the war, he wrote about the quiet, lonely moments. Richard Wilbur, who said, I would feel dead if I didn't have the ability periodically to put my world in order with a poem. I think to be inarticulate is a great suffering. Here's a poem for today by Linda Gregg, entitled The Weight. Two horses were put together in the same paddock, night and day, in the night and in the day, wet from heat and the chill of the wind on it, muzzle to water, snorting, head swinging, and the taste of bay in the shadowed air, the dignity of being. They slept that way knowing each other always, withers quivering for a moment, fetlock and the proud rise at the base of the tail, width of back, the volume of them, and each other's weight. Fences were nothing compared to that. People were nothing. They slept standing, their throats curved against the other's rump. They breathed against each other, whinnied and stomped. There are things they did that I do not know. The privacy of them had a river in it, had our universe in it, and the way its border looks back at us with its light. This was finally their freedom, the freedom an oak tree knows that is built at night by stars. A poem, The Weight, by Linda Gregg, from Chosen by the Lion, published by Grey Wolf Press and used by permission here in the Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.